a shooting. But maybe. Don't forget the grand opening tomorrow night of the Belly Youth. Pretty girl. Sweet singers of Southern song. Hello, Carter. I see you're opening up here. Yep. You're on me out of Lordsburg. Well, boys, in a couple of hours, you'll be buying your drinks across that bar. In the Palace of Pleasure. Listen to this, Eddie. Yesterday, Big Nose Jackson was buried in Boot Hill. He was shot to death by an unknown party. Joe Triplett, who officiates as coroner when not busy in the assay office, rendered the following verdict. Body rich in lead, too badly punctured to hold whiskey. <laughs> we are growing rapidly, but it is getting to be a question whether the city or the cemetery will be the larger. If the city can just keep a few steps ahead of the burial ground, we are bound to become the most flourishing camp in the Southwest. Watch us grow. Charlie, can't let Charlie drink. Seize little bugs. We'll send you out some hour. <laughs> Have any trouble, Curly? Nope. Got the stage coming through the pass. Driver handed over the money like it was real pleasure. How are things around here? Not so good. Billy Union getting all the play, eh? Yeah, Jerry and those girls from Chicago are drawing them in like flies. Sure doing the land office business over there. Hey, maybe we can do something about it. What do you mean? Charlie! Me? Sure, take a big swig. More? Take all you want. Walk a high baby in the treetop when the wind blows the cradle will Indian Charlie. He, he's killed Flesh Sullivan. Maybe some more folks by this time. He's a tearing our place up. Go over and get him, Marshal. Not me, Mr. Henderson. I aim to live a while. What's that? I'm not gonna walk over there and get my head blown off. Mr. Marshal, as mayor of Tombstone, I order you to arrest him. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, but I got a wife and kids. And Charlie ain't the kind that you can arrest when he's rampaging. Well, I wouldn't have a chance. He'd fill me full of lead before I got halfway through that door. Oh, so you won't do it? A nice lot of law you got here. Who said that? I did. Who are you? Just a visitor trying to get some sleep, but how can I with all this hooping and the yelling and the shooting? What kind of town you got here? A drunk goes loco with a gun and... Oh, you talk too much. Maybe, but if it was any of my business, I'd go across there and pull that tin on out by the heels. Oh, you would, would you? If it was any of my business. Yes? Well, you come down here and I'll make it your business.
I'm deputizing you as marshal. Go on. Drag him out by the heels. All right. Lend me a gun. Here it is. Don't worry. You'll never get to use it. You know who he is? No. But we'll find out at his inquest. Under arrest, put down those guns. <laughs> you heard me. Put those guns down. What did I tell you? <laughs> I don't reckon Charlie gave him much of a chance to use my gun. What I see? He ain't dead, just sort of grazed him. You'll come to in a few minutes and you can lock him up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go back and get some sleep. Who are you? My name's Earp. Wyatt Earp. You know me? Certainly I've heard of you. General Niles says you're the best scout the Army ever had. What brings you to Tombstone? Prospecting? Nope. Thought I might start a stage line. No, we got two here now that I run. No room for another one. How would you like to be marshal? Me? Yes. Job pays 500 a month and fees. No. Now listen. Sorry, but I've had enough of gun toting. Uh, you're fired. Marshal's still open? Yeah. And I'll take it. Good. Do these go with the job? Sure do. Let me get my pants. I'll be with you. 
Ain't gonna be no more volunteer marshals around this camp. <laughs> Put it up in a bar. Don't reach. Don't you lads try anything. You might get me, but first I'll blast him right in the belly. You two boys and Curly Bill, get going. with these boys out on the Mesa. Oh, I see. Think you better take the guns from them? Nope, I just as soon they try to use them. Get going. those guns. Throw them away. Now let's see what you can do when nobody's holding me. and get it good and clear. From now on, I'm the law in Tombstone. I don't want to see hide and a hair of you in the camp. Costing you plenty to get boy down here. Yep, Carter tried to get him for his palace of pleasure. But my dough talked louder and quicker than his. Nothing ain't too good for the Bella Union. Someday I figures on getting Lily Langford. Yeah? Jenny Lynn and all of them. Mm. 6.30, that stage must be late. Is boy on it? He better be. Supposing he gets cold feet and backs out. Well, I still have Jerry. <laughs>
on, Jerry. Give me luck. No, I'll see you later. Jerry, have a great day. Oh, that thing I'm going. Oh, say, would you mind singing the old Kent Road for me? Yeah, a little later, matey. I ain't forgot me London. <laughs> Another bottle of wine. Another bottle. Come on, sit down and take a hand, huh? No, I just think I'll stand here and watch him. Huh. Go ahead. How many? Well, I, I could stand Pat, but I'll, I'll take two. Leave your pen. <laughs> Go on, let's keep out the grocery clerks. I'm out. Yes, your three are better than mine. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Heal me out of this hand. <laughs> hey, Jerry, Jerry. Hey, where's that guy going with Jerry? Hey, what's the idea? What do you want? I don't think I'd do that anymore if I was you. Do what anymore? You got a pretty little neck, sister, but if you don't keep it out of card game, somebody's going to twist it right off. I don't know what you're talking about. Keep your hands off of me. about what you were going to do if Who? I... Uh, me? Yes. And take your hat off when I talk to you. Take hold and pull your gun. Well, not me. Oh, come on. Oh, I don't want any handkerchief duels with you, Doc, or, or any other kind of a fight. No? Well, maybe this will change your mind. Are you going to sit by and watch me treat your friend like this? Uh, he, he, he ain't no friend of mine, Doc. Better not try anything with me. I don't like the way you're running this town. And I especially don't like the way you treated a certain young lady. Take hold of it. <coughs> you always want an edge, don't you, Blackmore? Suppose you wait till he quits coughing. <coughs> Now, if you'll please step aside. Uh, no, Doc. I'm the marshal here, you know. I gotta keep the peace. Yes, of course, of course. Will you join me in a drink? Glad to. Better try another camp. This one's unhealthy. What can I do for you, senores? Whiskey. Whiskey, eh? <laughs> milk for you. That's right, Pete. <laughs> Doc, always drink milk. They never drink whiskey. Uh, una leche, one milk. Papa, Papa, the stage is coming, the stage is coming. Pablo, ven aquí. Ven, Pablo. Hello, Pablo. You want to be home with your mother. <laughs> I'm his mama and his papa. And someday I'm going to be his grandpa, too. <laughs> Pablo is a very good boy. He has no mama. He only has me. If he only were school. It's going to be one soon. Anderson and I were talking it over yesterday. Well, that's fine. Then Pablo can go there, and I bet you he'd be the smartest boy there. The smart like his papa. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty clever himself. <laughs> well, 
Welcome to Tombstone, Mr. Foy. Mr. Foy, welcome to Tombstone. Well, I'm glad to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Eddie Foy, the greatest comedian in the world. Tonight at 9, he'll be at the Bella Union. Come one, come all, and laugh your cares away. <laughs> Follow me, your baggage will be taken care of. <laughs> hey, where are you going? In a hurry, business in Tucson. This was originally a front line special, but I had the barrel cut down about two inches and the trigger dog smoothed down. Mm. Nice piece of hardware. Personally, I've been using a Colt 45 single action six gun. I guess the barrel's long on you one. Let's see. <laughs> no, 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 say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Doc, can I talk with you a minute? Oh, yes, of course. Excuse me, will you? Sure. you're taking care of Earth for me. Why, you've got him all wrong, my dear. Why, it's a fine fellow. <laughs> a fine fellow after what he done to me. Well, Jerry, if he threw you in the water trough, I guess you had it coming to you. Oh, yeah? Well, he may be all right to you, but he ain't to me. No tin hall marshal's gonna throw me in a horse trough and get away with it. <laughs> well, forget about Earth. Is that a new dress? Yeah. Yeah. You like me in it? Come here. I like you in anything. Gee, you're sweet. You know, Doc, I've been thinking about you all day. Do you ever think of me when I ain't with you? Yeah. What? Too much. You know? Sometimes when you look at me like that, I could break you in two. Well, why don't you? Come on. Break me. I'm getting off early tonight. Maybe we could... No, no. Not tonight. Where are you going, Doc? Fairbank. I feel lucky. I'll see you later. Hey, Jerry, where are you, baby? How is it about you and me finding a cozy corner and a nice cold bottle of wine, huh? If it's all right with you, cutie, I'll take a rain check. <laughs> <laughs> Something I can do for you, lady? Yes, I'm looking for John Halliday. John? Oh, uh, you mean Doc Halliday? Yes. Uh, you'll find him over there, bucking the tiger. John. What are you doing here? Cash me in. Come on, I sit over here. Can I get you something to drink, to eat? No, John. Just arrive on the stage? Yes. How did you find out where I was? Well, I've been searching for two years. Why did you do it, John? What else was there to do? I couldn't fasten a dying man onto you? I was a sick dog, and I slunk away like a sick dog. Without even saying goodbye? I felt it was best that way. Best for you, perhaps. I hope it would be for you, too. 
It wasn't very flattering to me, John, for you to think my love's so weak. No. No, Sarah. I know you'd insist on going through with the marriage no matter what. That's why I left. I couldn't take advantage of you. That's why I had to leave. And now you see it was no use. Here I am. Yes, here you are. But you can't stay, Sarah. You've got to go. Why, John? Because it's not right. You don't know me. I'm a stranger. You? Yes, Sarah. Sick or well, I'm not the John Halliday you knew back in Illinois. And nothing like him. There's no resemblance at all. You don't know. Oh, I do know. They've told me all about you. In Dodge City, in Globe, in Tucson, in Lordsburg, all through the West. Doc Halliday, the killer, they called you. Killer? John Halliday, the kind young doctor who leaned over sick babies all night. John Halliday, who cried when Mrs. Foster died in childbirth. John Halliday... I don't want to hear anymore. Yes, I'm a killer. What of it? Life's nothing. My life, anybody's life. What's the difference what happens to a lot of rats caught in a trap? What they do, how they act. Sarah, you've got to go. No, John. I've searched too long. But I don't want you. You don't mean that, John. Yes, I do. It's got to be that way, Sarah. You don't know everything. You leave quickly enough if I don't. <coughs> All right, Doctor. Take it easy. Take it easy. Thanks, Jerry. Darling. So now you see how things stand, don't you? There's a stage out in the morning. Go on back where you belong and leave me alone. There's a side door over there. I think you'll find it's the quickest way out. Hello, Doc. Oh, I know. I got it from you right away. Here's your mail. Who said I wanted that? Whiskey. Whiskey? Sure, see, whiskey. What's the matter? Didn't you ever see anybody drink whiskey before? No. I never see you drink whiskey. Well, you're seeing me now. I think I do. They're going to do it. They're, they're going to do it. Do what? Uh, hurrah our show tonight, the Palace of Pleasure crowd. Oh, I've heard some talk about them making trouble, yeah, but don't worry, nothing's going to happen. Well, but are you sure, Mr. Earp? I, I've, I've got a lot of money tied up in Foy. Yeah, forget all about it. That's what I'm here for, to give you protection and see that nobody bothers you. Take it easy. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Foy. Oh, yes? I'll be ready in a minute. Says a big crowd over at the Bellow Union? I wouldn't know. You ain't going there. What did you say? I said you wasn't going to the Bellow Union. You're going to do your act at the Palace of Pleasure. Why, there must be some mistake. The Palace didn't make me an offer, but my contract called... Don't talk so much and finish up. We'll pay you your dough, but you better be funny. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. I'll be funny, all right. I'll do my best. I'd be a little nervous, but I guess that happens. Oh. Guess we'll get along now, eh? Mm. <laughs> Just at nine, Dan McGinty dressed so fine, stood looking up at a very high stone wall. When his friend young Pat McGann says, I'll bet five dollars, Dan, I could carry you to the top without a fall. 
So on his shoulders he should then to climb the ladder he began. And he soon commenced to reach up near the top. When McGinty, the cute old rogue, to win the five, he did let go, never thinking just how far he had to drop. Oh, down went McGinty to the bottom of the wall. And though he won the five, he was more dead than alive. Sure, his ribs and nose and back were broke from getting such a fall. Just in his best suit of clothes. Hello, Doc. Get away from me. You drink whiskey like crazy men. Yeah, I've been noticing. Always Doc says whiskey no good for him. He say, someday when I want a quick way out, I drink whiskey. Quick way out, eh? Yeah, that's what he told me. They, they've kidnapped him. Who? Eddie Foy is over at the Palace of Pleasure. Yeah, maybe he changed his mind. That's where he wants to be. No, it ain't. They came over to the hotel and got him. It was Buck Newton. Oh, in that case, I better look into it. The palace pleasure to kidnap Foy. I'll go with you. There might be some excitement. Stop it and come down off of there. Come with me, Mr. Foy. You belong across the street. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Go on, drop him. Pringo, we mustn't disappoint the audience. Suppose you get out there and finish that dance yourself. Oh, who, me? Hey, music. Oh, but, Doc, I, I can't dance. Go on, dance. Overstepping your authority, Marshal, coming in here and interfering in my You business. know, I've been pretty patient with you, Carter, but if you insist, I'll lock you up for kidnapping. Wasn't that shooting I heard? Yeah, over the Palace of Pleasure. A man named Doc Halliday just shot a man who tried to shoot the Marshal. Any of you other gentlemen care to shoot Mr. Earp in the back? Come on, let's clean the whole place out. No, no, no more, Doc. We've done our job. Come on, let's go back to the Bella Union. Come on, Mr. Foy. Comedian, not much the worse for wear. Thanks, Marshal. Glad to see you alive, Mr. Foy. I need a drink. Come with me. Whiskey. Oh, see. Whiskey. Keep on with that. You'll be dead before morning. Yeah, good. Even if you don't kill yourself with that stuff, Doc, somebody will kill you sure before the night's out. You wouldn't stand a Chinaman's chance of defending yourself. Listen, I can take care of myself. I don't need anybody to look after me. I know what I'm doing. Now, listen, Doc. Oh, make... what's the difference, anyway? She's gone away. Why are you sending her away, Doc? Why? What do you want me to do? Saddle her with this rotten, stinking body? I don't want to talk about her. Do you keep out of my affairs? Doc, don't drink anymore. Huh? Please don't, Doc. You've had You it. leave me alone. Or I'll twist your neck. Go on. Go away. I don't like you. I think I'll finish you off right now. Oh. Ah, you, you, you broke my... my I life. don't like you either. No, Doc! Oh. You didn't have to do that. You'd have left him to me. I'd have taken care of him. Hey, Bill. Lend me a hand. Don't let a little shooting annoy you, Mr. Foy. The boys don't mean no harm by it. That's just their way of having fun. Well, that's very nice. But I was under the impression that I came here to cause the fun. So you did, Mr. Foy. So you did. And if you're half as funny as I've heard you are, 
you'll have nothing to worry about. Where's Eddie Foy? Hey, where's Eddie Foy? Oh, oh there you are. Hey, I was watching you over at the Palace of Pleasure dancing when you were so rudely interrupted. Now I want to see you dance again. I know, but I was just dancing. I see you dance. Now, gentlemen, the drinks are on me. Well, it isn't a question of my going away. John is sending me away. Ma'am, I, I don't know what you've been to, Doc. I know very little about you and him, but I can tell you this. If you leave, he's a goner. A goner? Doc ain't caring what happens to him, and I've got a hunch that you're the only one that can make him care. No, I'm afraid you're mistaken. John doesn't need me. Not anymore. Aren't you talking to the wrong person? Say, you don't think Jerry means anything to him, do you? Well, doesn't she? Not a thing. She's crazy about him, but as far as he goes, she's just a... You're the only one that counts. It isn't her picture he's carrying around in his wallet. Doc's eating out his heart over you. He wants you, but he doesn't want a Saturday with a sick man. Between the two notions, he's almost loco. Well, what can I do? Stay and put up a fight. If anybody can save him, you can. I was just sure you were right. I am right. You're his only chance. What do you say? All right, I'm going to stay. Good. Don't let Jerry bother you. I think I can take care of her. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. Doc will need a lot of tender nursing when he comes to. I'll take care of him. That's fine. Good night, ma'am. Good night. I'm not here to roll at you. I'm going to ask you for a favor. <laughs> you ask me a favor. Yeah, I want you to give Doc a break. Do what? He's in a bad way, Jerry, and you're not good for him. Oh, no? No, but there's somebody in town who is. And if you think a lot of Doc and want to help him, you'll get out of her way. Her way? You talking about that high-nosed dame over the hotel? Say, listen, Doc doesn't care two hoots about her. Oh, yes, he does. More than he'll ever care for anyone. She means life to him. What am I, a funeral? Say, does Doc know you're talking to me? No. No? Well, Waitley finds out. He'll twist that tin star around your heart. Doc don't stand for anybody buttoning into his affairs, and I don't neither. Say, if you like the dame so well, why don't you grab her off for yourself? Now, listen, Jerry. I'm I here. won't. You've been buttoning into my affairs ever since you came here. You try and bust up things between Doc and me. And I'll make it the sorriest day of your life. I want to talk to him. What's up? Got a complaint from the Palace of Pleasure? No. No, sir. Sprinkle right. I want you to ride shotgun on my stage tomorrow. Yeah? Why? There may be nothing to it, but a rumor has come to me that Curly Bill might try a holdup. We're shipping out a lot of bullion. 
I see. Now, here's the plan. We'll ship tomorrow, that is Sunday, instead of Monday, and maybe throw them off the guard. Yeah, good idea. You won't have to ride the stage all the way to Tucson. Just go as far as Granger's Ranch, and he'll give you a horse to come back with. Okay. Stage leaves about 6 in the morning. What's the matter with you, Galoots? Ain't you ever seen a lady's ankle? <laughs> Why, hello. How's your mind doing? Doing very good. She's on about five or six hundred a ton. Well, this is a good place to spend it. Hey, Ben. Why, hello, Jerry. What are you doing here? I want to talk to you alone for a minute. All right. Come on back to the office. Well, Jerry. What's on your mind? What do you give for a valuable piece of information? What kind of information? Well, the stage is going out tomorrow instead of Monday with a load of silver. Oh, why should that interest me? Hmm? Earp's riding shotgun, and I know you don't like Earp. Hmm. What else do you know? Well, I happen to know that you and Curly Bill are like that. You're a smart girl, Jerry. Are you playing me for a sucker, or do you want to cut in? No, there's only one way you can cut me in. See that Curly Bill takes care of Herb. Oh, you don't like him either? No, I don't like him either. The happiest day of my life will be when I can spit in his coffin. Leaving town, Mr. Foy? Yes, if I live that long. Oh. Hey, can I ride up there with you? Sure, hop right up. All ready, Bill? Yep. I don't think it'll be very safe for you up there, Mr. Foy. Well, it isn't very safe for me in there either, Mr. Marshall. Doc, <laughs> huh? where are you going? Son. Mr. Foy, you mind holding these? Get going, Bill. I'll ride inside with Doc. How come you're riding shotgun? Bull him. Taking it as far as Granger's. They may have a visit from Curly Bill. Driven him away. That's what you've done. Why you? You girls looking for Doc Halliday? Yes. Yeah. He's gone. Oh, I know that. But where? He took the stage this morning. The stage? Are you sure he took the stage? Sure, I'm sure. I seen him get in. They kill him. They hate him as much as they do her. They kill him. I tell you. That's what they'll do. <sighs> who'll kill who? What are you talking about? Is John in danger? Tell me, what is it? Curly Bill and his gang, they... Oh, what have I done? Oh, what have I done? Well, what have you done? What's the matter? Tell me. 
Listen, Doc, you don't think I got any pleasure out of hitting you over the head, do you? But I saw you heading for trouble and... I suppose I was. Well, after all, I am Marshal of Tombstone. And <laughs> when you start to take a shot at my favorite bartender... Look what I... you did at the Bella Union, I don't care about. It's interfering in my personal affairs. Does it ever occur to you to mind your own business? Yes, quite often. Doc, I thought we were friends. We were, but that gave you no right to do what you did. I had my own plans for ending a certain situation, and it would have ended that way if you hadn't interfered. That's right, Doc. I did talk to her. Yes. And since the ladies decided to stay, there's nothing left for me to do but go. So, you see, Mr. Herb, sticking your nose into my business hasn't changed things any. I, I'm sorry you feel that way about it. I thought I was doing you a good turn. She's a wonderful gal, Doc. And you'd never be a burden to her, not to her. You know, all I ever knew about love is what I've seen of it around dance halls and places like that, but... It can be entirely different, altogether different. Hey, what's the idea of these things? If we run into trouble, you'll find them mighty handy. Trouble? I'm not looking for trouble. I mind my own business. Listen, Doc, why don't you change your mind and go back with me? We can get horses Oh, drop the subject. I've had enough of you, Ed. Oh, you have, have you? Well, all I got to say is you're a crazy fool, and what I ought to do is hit you over the head and drag you back to Tombstone. Yeah? Maybe you'd like to try it. If I tried it, I'd do it. You buffaloed a lot of people in Dad, your time. I've got a handkerchief here. Go ahead. Pull it. Wrap your reins and get off the box. Found rocks on the road. Well, turn around. We'll hold them off while you're doing it. Get a doctor. A doctor is gone to Bisbee. I'll take care of him. Better luck next time. Kelly Bell? Yeah. This is Tombstone. Boiling water. Get me some boiling water. Get it yourself. I ain't taking no orders from you. Get me some boiling water. You heard it, Johnny. Better get some boiling water. All right, Doc. For you. It's not bad, John. No bone or arteries involved. I'll put a dressing on it. All right, nurse. It's your case. Here, now, you hold this. And sit still till I get back. 
How do you reckon Curly Bill found out the stage was leaving on Sunday? I got a pretty good idea. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't know that... You didn't know what? Oh, nothing, nothing. Kind of like old times for you. Yes, like old times. Remember? I remember you driving through a raging blizzard to deliver a baby at the Wilson's farm. And then catching pneumonia and nearly dying. You know, you were my very first real case, John. I bet your thermometer into scared you nearly to death. And left the hospital three weeks too soon and had to be nursed all over again. Well, not a very good job of nursing. Look at your patient now. If you'd obeyed your nurse, you wouldn't be here now. All right. All right, hurry up and get out of here. Doc and me wants to be alone. I won't need you anymore. You won't need me anymore. Say, you trying to run me out of here? I'm telling you to leave. <laughs> Hear what she's saying, Doc? <laughs> well, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about it. This is a hospital for the moment. She's a nurse in charge. I think you better go. <laughs> I won't. She can't make me. I think I can. I've had quite some experience with violent ah. cases. Hey, what's the idea? She threw me out. She threw me out. Good. That's just where you belong. Out. Yeah? Well, if you and that dame in there... Think... Listen here, Jerry. I've had enough of your nonsense. You tipped off Carter about the stage. Who says so? Never mind who says so. I got every reason to believe... Oh, you've got every reason to believe. Sure, you believe what you just want to believe. You've been after me ever since you come here. All right, let's forget about the stage. But I'm warning you, you keep away from Halliday and behave yourself or I'm going to run you out of town. Yeah? You and who? Come on, come on. Get... There. Comfortable? No, and I won't be until you leave Tombstone. Let's not talk about that anymore. You've tried your best to drive me away. You've lied, you've done everything, but... It's no use, John. I'm staying. I like the town, I like your friend the marshal. I, I wish like... I could make you understand. It's all so unfair to you. I won't be around long. Yes, you will. <laughs> You're telling the doctor? John. Do you remember in the hospital when I read aloud to you from Julius Caesar? Yeah. There was a line in the first act that went something like this. Cowards die many times before their death. The brave but once. I am a coward? You've become one, John. You're afraid of living and you're afraid of dying. No. Not afraid of dying. Yes, afraid of dying. Oh, all this going around killing and hoping to be killed isn't courage? Well, that's just a cover for fear. Well, you're frantic with fear. You're not displaying any more courage than a melee who runs amok. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, maybe I'm not making myself very clear. But my idea of courage is taking what's coming to you without striking out right and left like a wild man. I believe in fighting, yes. But fighting with an orderly mind, hopefully. Oh, words, just words. No, they're not just words, John. If you'd forget guns and forget killings and learn to think calmly and kindly, you'd get well. That's the way it's going to stay, closed. By whose authority? Mine. You boys want Carter's body, you'll find it just the other side of the pass. You don't think you've heard the last of this, do you? 
Yeah, I reckon Curly Bill's had enough for a while anyway. Well, you better reckon again, Herp. Curly will get you and Doc Halliday for this if he has to tear this camp up by the roots. And I'll be right here to help him. You talk too much for a fighting man, Pringle. Thanks, Doc. Pablo! 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 Who done it? Who done it? I killed him! I killed him! You don't have to. It's been done. Oh, you! Oh, Glenn Mena! Oh, my! Oh, senor! Take that stuff off that table. Si, please, senor! Oh, my Pablo! Oh, senor! Bring some towels, quick. It's late and bad. Somebody get the doctor. He won't be back until morning. Oh, but glad anybody do something. My Pablo, he died. Oh, my Pablo. Yeah, wait a minute. I know. <laughs> si, senora, please. Pronto. I'm sorry, Sarah, but... Hey, you, you're needed. Little Pablo's just been shot. Come on, come on. Senor, you think it'd be all right? <laughs> Pablito, Miro! We all stand here. Anyone can do nothing for my Pablo. Come on, boy. Dying. Make way. Make way. Say, she's a nurse. Maybe she can do something. Here, put your fingers there. It'll <laughs> check the hemorrhage until the doctor comes. Well, the doctor's out of town. Will someone get Dr. Halliday? My gosh, Doc is a doctor. That's right, but he's all stove up. Will someone please get Dr. Halliday? Yeah. I'll get him for you. Make me here. Oh, come on, Doc. You're wanted. Here he is, Doc. All right, let go. Take hold. Severed artery, there's nothing I can do. But you've got to do something, John. You can't let the boy die without making well, an effort. Under the most favorable conditions, Sarah, it's a delicate operation far beyond me. What can I do with one arm and no instruments? I'll get you some instruments. Do you know where the doctor lives? Yeah. Take me there quickly. Doc, please, do something for my boy. Boil some water, lots of it. Get me some vessels and a mirror from the girls' room. And all your clean towels. Right, Doc. Not in. I know you, big cow. Get out of the way. Quick, it's a matter of life or death. Where does the doctor keep his instruments? You know, instruments, cachillas, things he cuts with. El puso todo en el belice se fue para Bisbee. Oh, there's nothing here. Doc's taking everything with him to Bisbee. Take this. But well, what's the good of all this? Doc can't do anything with no instruments, can he? I don't know. Come on, get out of the way. No, get out of the way. But a little boy, the church was dying. Come on, get out of the way, you big lug. All right, now everybody stand back and give me room, lots of it. Get back, everybody. No scalpel. No. Have you got a razor? I got one in the office, Doc. I'll get it. All right, Doctor, you can wash up now. Roll my sleeve. Stop shaking and brush the doctor's hands. Administer the ether. Take that mirror. Go 
hold it against the lamp and reflect all the light you can down here. <laughs> Raise it, please. his face. Va a estar bueno. He's going to leave. He says, my boy, <laughs> Pablo, he's going to leave. Right. I'm so happy, you know. Come, John. You've got to get some rest. Yes, Sarah? Isn't it more thrilling to give life than to take it away? My shotgun. I'll swear in a posse. We'll wipe them out. No, Henderson. This is my fight. I'll handle it. Hold it a second. Frank, let me a six gun. <laughs> Sorry you can't come along, Doc. Take your dad alive, Curly. You and your friends better come out and surrender peacefully. All right, you four flusher. If you want me, come and get me. Well, Mr. Marshall, are you coming in? Or do we have to go out and get you? Drop that gun, Curly. Come here. Turn around. I'm gonna try to take you alive if your friends will let me. Get going. You men, drop your guns and come out.
The stage is ready to go. I'll put your baggage aboard. No, wait. I've changed my mind. I'm not going. You're not going? No. You see, John meant a lot to me. Everything. Just being near where he was makes me feel I'm still close to him. I understand. I'll tell him you're not going. Thank you. Don't wait for Miss Allen. She's not going. Oh, are you leaving town, Jerry? Yeah, this dump's getting too tame for me. Look. When people start saving their money, it's time for me to vamoose. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Jerry, and good luck. Thanks. Well, I guess you must be all right. If you wasn't a great fella like Doc wouldn't have liked you. So long. Yeah.